Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, great to have you with us. Gardner McKay was a major star, a television heartthrob in the early 1960s, the star of the hit TV series Adventures in Paradise, also starring roles in movies and theater, a successful author as well. The book, Gardner McKay is My Adventures in Paradise by Beverly Hoffman Erickson. She was a huge fan. This is her true story, her personal diary written in the 1960s. We step back in time with Beverly, and she shares her teenage world of meeting her idol for the very first time, the thrill of seeing him perform in dramatic plays that still are classics. Beverly was born in South Bend, Indiana, lived there for 32 years, worked for the community school system and Notre Dame, attended Ball State University, owned several businesses, including Feather Fables Publishing Company and Photography. Her first book, Skipper and Jade, A Love Story, published in 1993, followed by A Flower for Iggy, which became a musical, and then Cockatoo Capers, and Toy on Top of a Christmas Tree, and Gardner McKay is My Adventures in Paradise, now living in California, continuing to enjoy concerts, drama, and travel. Author Beverly Hoffman Erickson, our guest on This Week in America. Beverly, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Great to be here. It's a step back in time. This is sort of like your memory book, going back to uh, a time that I shared age-wise as well, where television was something truly special at the time. And let's go back to how this all began for you. I understand in reading the book, it was almost Clint Walker that became your heartthrob when you were five years old and watching television, wasn't it? Oh, definitely. He was my first love. I saw him and thought this is the most handsome man I've ever seen in my life. And then you, you I mentioned five years old, so your mother sort of shielded you from television at that point. It was okay for others Still, to like, but you're a little young for that. Yes, I was. Um, she couldn't understand how I could become very interested in men at that young of age. <laughs> <laughs> she thought it was in the, very unusual. <laughs> Well, you know, during that period when something came on television, everybody knew every program when it came on, mesmer- mesmerized by television, as you can imagine, the end of the 1950s, early 1960s. And then you had your chance at, uh, what, October 5th, 1959, the premiere of uh, Adventures in Paradise. Talk about that and Gardner McKay and the impact he had on you. And then we'll talk a little bit about this uh, well, there's no other way to describe it. He was a heartthrob during that era, wasn't he? Oh, definitely. He uh, became popular just overnight. But I saw the first show that he was in, and it was so uh, dramatic. I, the one one look at him speaking and acting, uh, I just could not believe this type of person existed. Yeah, in the story, he was uh, Adam Troy, the skipper of the Tiki. And it was everything about it as you write in there. You forget that the, the TV shows used to have the same opens every week. They had theme songs. There was a real special aura to this, wasn't there, because of where the, uh, where, well, it was set in paradise. So that uh, that was actually a, almost a character on the program. Oh, yes. And being in South Bend, Indiana at the time, <laughs> uh, it, it really attracted me to the tropics. And it had such an impact at that age, what you would get people together in the basement and, like, play out your own little scenes from Adventures in Paradise. Yes, we, I had several girlfriends that started watching the program, too. So we would go downstairs and play the songs from South Pacific on the uh, record player down there and act out the part of the uh, show we would literally become those characters in our mind and in our heart. And I would probably play the part of Gardner the most, (laughs) naturally. (laughs) The book we're talking about is Gardner McKay is My Adventures in Paradise. The author is Beverly Hoffman Erickson. Books available at Amazon. You can click on directly, get information by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. What was it like when, when the program was, was taken off the air? And I understand it was pretty much what Gardner wanted to do other things, and he decided he didn't want to do the program. It was on for, what, three seasons. What was that like when suddenly My Adventures in Paradise is not on TV anymore? Well, we were devastated. I mean, 
I was completely devastated, didn't understand why he would suddenly quit the show, but we were told in the movie magazines that the ratings, the Nielsen Media Research ratings, said the school the show was not doing as well, and that was why it was taken off, which was not true. At, but at that time, that was what they were to, everyone was told, that it was the ratings were the reason that the show was taken off the air. But then they went ahead and started rewriting the show in the summertime, right after it was taken off. Yes. And it became a so hit overseas was, as well, didn't it? It was a uh, it was oh, one yes, of those it programs. Oh, very well overseas. Yeah. In fact, I heard that he got an Emmy for Best Actor in France. It's amazing how the that show resonated literally around the world. And, and after this... Uh, ended during that that period he appeared in the movie the pleasure seekers talk about that because you said and and suddenly you realize yeah we didn't have color television back then this was the first time when you went to see the movie this is the first time you actually saw gardner mckay in color he was a heartthrob to you in black and white what was it like seeing him in color for the first time well that that is an interesting question um i thought he was handsome in black and white, <laughs> but in color, and with the voice that he had and the charisma and the presence, when he stepped onto the screen for the first time, I just was overwhelmed. <laughs> well, it's, yes, here he no is. no way to describe it, because I was at the age where I was coming of age, but didn't understand what the process was, so I didn't understand my emotions then, even. You know, it's interesting because you've been watching him, one, in black and white, two, on a television screen. And back then, I don't think any of us had 75-inch screens. So suddenly you see him in color and this huge screen in a movie theater. And that had to be a a vivid memory. I'm sure you could uh, probably describe it down to a T even years later, couldn't you? Oh, sure. I can remember the seats and everything. I mean, I still can picture they were all red. (laughs) <laughs> it sounds like theaters back at that time, they had no imagination. I think they, they all looked the same. And then in the chapter you talk about seeing is believing. Talk about this because you find that he's doing some theater, some regional theater. Uh, he's going to be in Chicago. Your dad's in Chicago, and you get he gets you tickets. Talk about how that all came about. Well, my dad brought home a newspaper. And I happened to spot the thing that Gardner McKay was in uh, playing at the Drury Lane Theater in Evergreen Park, Illinois. And I couldn't believe it. And I said to my mother, we have to go see him. He's going to be in person. Well, my dad looked into the Drury Lane Theater and ordered tickets on Mother's Day, May 9th, 1965 and said, we are going to see Gardner McKay. So that's how it transpired. It's amazing on Mother's Day that uh, you got to go and uh, to see him. Okay, so tell me about the anticipation as you're sitting there knowing you're going to see him, this time not on film, but going to see him in person, going to be very close to you. What was that like, the anticipation which oftentimes is maybe the biggest part of the event, just the anticipation for that. What was that like as you're sitting there waiting for the uh, uh, the curtains to open and Gardner McKay to be in front of you? Well, I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> I couldn't eat. <laughs> My heart was beating. Uh, we had just had lunch at the theater because it was a dinner theater in the round. And I just, you know, I could not hardly get my breath. <laughs> yes, yes. He just took my breath away. I can imagine the anticipation that. anticipation of seeing this gorgeous actor up here. So when that happens, when he's on screen, and then we'll, we'll talk in a second, but you got to, to actually meet him afterwards. When he's on screen, what did that do? Sometimes we see people in person, and it's like, okay, that's sort of a letdown. That really wasn't the case for you, was it? Not at all. Um, he was uh, very tall, uh, very slim, had perfect skin, uh, was, uh, had a perfect sounding voice, 
And I, did, I had never seen anybody as gorgeous as him, as a person and as an actor. I mean, this was the first time I'd ever been to a theater in the round to begin with. And uh, I just could not believe that I was sitting there listening and seeing him in person. And then a little bit later, after the, the performance is over, you actually get to meet him. So talk about that experience again. Sometimes when you come in contact, it's like, okay, that, that, that was pretty much a jerk. That's not what I expected. But again, that wasn't the case. In fact, you ended up giving him a kiss on the cheek. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yes. <laughs> I didn't really think we were going to get to see him in person after the show because they never mentioned it. They didn't say that Gardner would be giving autographs in his dressing room or anything to that. So uh, my father decided to check with one of the gals that was an usher to see if we could meet Gardner in person. And she says, sure, he's back in his dressing room. He's sitting there, and he's giving autographs. She says, get in line, and then, and you can see him. So I followed my father back there, and then he said, okay, I'll let you go because I know you're nervous, he says, and I don't want to blow this for you. <laughs> so you could go ahead and wait and see Gardner. <laughs> and... And the room smelled very good because he was smoking a pipe that was sort of cherry flavored. Yes. And he was seated with his, uh, and his brow was sort of wet. It looked like he was uh, warm from being on the stage. And I watched as one of the gals in front of me, she, she had like a low cut dress, et cetera, um, <laughs> walked up to him and, as, and she gave him a kiss. And then she ran out of the room screaming in delight, like, <laughs> I mean, you know, just thrilled to death to but see that, it. Yes. So, but she was much older than me. So I was a little bit, you know, <laughs> surprised at that reaction. Well, yeah. But I, I thought to myself, well, I'm not going to let her just take the whole thunder. <laughs> well, no, and he, you got an autograph, and then you ended up with a, with a kiss on the cheek. That had to be a, a, certainly a magic moment for you. Well, for me it was because he says to me, what is your name? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I didn't even know that they gave autographs with your name on it. And I had a, uh, a sheet of paper that I was going to have him sign that was one of his fan club newsletters. Well, what he did is he opened up the fan club newsletter and blew smoke in it and <laughs> said to me, where did you get this? And I said to him, from your studio. He says, well, I've never seen this before. And I was puzzled. I thought, well, why hadn't he seen it? Yes. And he says, who uh, distributed this? And I said, well, a person named Lee Anna. And he said, oh, so then he folded it back up, and then he wrote my name to Beverly on the sheet, and, and it was pink in color at the time. <laughs> and uh, that uh, was a, a sort of a moment stood still at that moment. <laughs> oh, I should I, say it I'm that sure way. It, just reading that story and going through with you the emotions from the, the memories back when this happened, the book is... Gardner McKay is My Adventures in Paradise, some pictures that have never been seen before. The book is an excellent read, and for so many of us, it brings back memories of those, those glamorous times of, of television and show business. The author is Beverly Hoffman Erickson. The book's available at Amazon, at Barnes & Noble. Beverly's website is beverlyerickson.com. You can link on and get all the information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. A few minutes left in the program. This was the first of, of how many times did you get to actually see him in in, in live performance? Uh, four times. It's amazing. Second, go ahead. No, talk about the second time. And one of the times you actually skipped school and you thought you were going to get by skipping school, but they gave you an assignment to write about it. So you actually were sort of a working journalist at the time. Uh, yes. In fact, I was interviewing him for from the play Any Wednesday, which L Loretta Swit, a 
an unknown actress at the time. That's funny. Played his officer. Yes. So when I went backstage to talk to him again, I gave him another kiss on the hand. But this time he grabbed a hold of my hand and uh, held it quite a long time. And uh, that impressed me. (laughs) (laughs) But... uh, he said to me, would you please send me the article to to me so I could read it after you uh, publish it, have it published. And I said, well, where should I send it to? He says, the theater right here. So I went ahead and sent him a certified letter to make sure he signed it and got it. And I didn't think anything would come of it. After that, but uh, later on, I believe the dating game came on. He may actually made a quote from the article that I wrote on the dating game. <laughs> so I was really, uh, you know, shocked. I'm still hunting for that uh, dating game episode that he was on, though. To That's make sure I. Just, wasn't imagining it. <laughs> just uh, such a delightful story. Gardner McKay is my adventures in paradise, and all of the stories unfold in the book, uh, basically going back with uh, with Beverly as she recounts that time in her life. Let's jump up to November 23 of 2001. Uh, talk about getting the information that, uh, that Gardner had died. He'd become a successful author at that point, and you were even thinking about what going to Hawaii to do a book signing and, and maybe to see him again. Uh, yes, because he had just published a book with Little Brown and Company, a major publisher, yes. uh, entitled Toyer. And he was doing book signings at different um, bookstores in Hawaii where he lived with his wife. And I thought, well, I'd like to see him again and perhaps get Toyer signed. So we were sort of contemplating flying to Hawaii and looking him up, basically, because yes. my husband was real interested in my Adventures in Paradise <laughs> situation and uh, from following him all these years. Well, and you followed him all the way through. There's a, a picture where you actually went to the gravesite, the tombstone that's that, that's oh, pictured yeah. in the book as well. So you... You literally followed him all the way up until the end. The book is Gardner McKay is My Adventures in Paradise. I can't help but read, think as, I, as I'm reading the book, and you even mentioned that, this was a, a glamorous time. We had real idols back then, didn't know everything about them, and that necessarily wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Now you've got, you can follow them on Twitter, you, you find out good, the bad. Uh, it's just not the same, is it, as it was when we were growing up and you only got what the studios basically wanted you to know about these people. Well, that's definitely correct. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, and you didn't have all of the, the negative out there. You didn't have all of the social media. It was, uh, it was a, a whole different time, and you didn't know that much. I mean, now, you, like I said, you could follow them. You could uh, you Google them and find out what they had for lunch today, and that was a whole different... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a whole different era back there. Uh, about the 30 seconds left in the program. What was this like for you, going back and going through all of the the scrapbook and all of the memories and putting the book together? Uh, well, what was it like when I back in the 60s, are you saying? No, now when you go back and you, you see, that was Beverly back in the 60s, and you see your, your true emotions that you wrote down during that period. As you were writing the book and going back and reliving those those memories, what was that like for you? Well, I, I just re, it re, was like I was reliving it. Yes, yes. And the emotions came back just like I was when I was that age. <laughs> it still does. And that's Actually, not... A, that, that's yep. the way it is today, even. <laughs> And I was just going to say, that's not a bad thing. I just really enjoyed the book. Gardner McKay is My Adventures in Paradise. The author is Beverly Hoffman Erickson. The book's available at Amazon at Barnes & Noble. 
Beverly, uh, excellent job on the book with with the with the story. It's it's such an entertaining read, and thank you so much for uh, being with us on the program today. Oh, thank you for having me. It has been our pleasure. Book once again, Gardner McKay is my Adventures in Paradise. The author Beverly Hoffman Erickson, our guest. The book's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and of course you can link on directly to information on Beverly's book by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after we pause for these messages. Beverly, excellent job. Thank you so much for that. Oh, okay. Good. That. That was fun. It went by way too quickly. Thank you.